Hey, what's up guys? I'm uh, bottling up my milk stout right now. Uh, if you could see it here, and I could show it to you right here. Uh, yeah, you could kind of see it there, yeah? And I'm just uh, filling up some of the bottles right now. Um, let me just make sure I don't make a mess here. Um, so yeah, I'm just putting in milk stout in some of these bottles. And bam. And then I'm gonna bottle all of these after I fill them up. Um, except, let me see if I could rest it here. There we go. Uh, except for some of these right here, you got some of the rubber stopper ones, and these, they're done pretty much once you do it like this. So, 30 days to 60 days, and these will be set. Got a big one right here, so I hope it's going to be good, because otherwise no one's going to want to drink them. Yep, there we go. Anyways, um, that's not all I'm here to show you. I figure if I'm bottling up a dark beer, I should drink some dark beer as well. And uh, from the suggestion of, um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm going to be having the Baltica 6, the porter. I haven't had this before, but um, I was like, I should try this again. Plus, I want to try it for another reason, which I'll tell you later. Uh, Dennis. Yeah, that's right. Dennis. Sorry. Sorry, man. I had, I had work today. That's my excuse. So, yeah, it's, it's great, great. One great thing about brewing, doing homebrew, is drinking while you do it. So, yeah, here it is. Here's the colors. Very dark. Uh, you can kind of see the light through it. Like, you can kind of see a ruby color. Mmm. Smells really... It smells like... It's like light lightish dark fruit kind of smell. Mmm. Yeah. Dennis, you're right. This is good. Wow. It tastes good. It has... Uh, what's it, like, like a molasses kind of sweetness a bit. Like a very light one. It has some, like I said, little light, lightish dark fruit. Mmm. Quite good. A decent amount of carbonation. Has a nice sweetness that finishes off to the end. Um, this is this is very good. Uh, it's it's on. I wouldn't say it's on the lighter side. I think it's a good standard porter. I, I think Baltica. I think they really do their research because their wheat ale tastes like a legitimate German Hefeweizen, and this tastes like a legitimate English porter, really. Dollar seventy nine for this. That's, that's a really good deal. Here, I'm gonna show you uh, my uh, milk stout right here. I just measured it, just figure out the gra uh, you know, measuring the gravity. But actually, that's not when you should measure the gravity. But I just did it anyways. I, I kind of like drinking it from here. If you see my Facebook fan page, uh, there's a picture of me drinking this. But so this is the milk stout so far. Before I put in the secondary fermenting sugars. Uh, for it to bubble up in the bottle, but anyways, let me give this a try. I did, I did once earlier. Yeah, see, it tastes weird at first. I remember the first drink I had; it tasted weird. It's thick from the sugar, but it's like. Hmm. But then the second time, I remember it tasting actually good, and I think it already has alcohol in it too. And it is, it is warm, too. Yeah, at least it tastes like there's a lot of alcohol. <laughs> I don't know. So, anyways, that's that. Um, finally, I was able to take the label off of the dogfish head bottle. So, I got this cool looking 22 ounce bottle right here. Um, yeah, I should get ready uh, for this one. And this is a 24 ounce Sierra Nevada bottle. After I got the um, Southern Hemisphere Fresh Hop Ale. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to show you. Uh, actually, I don't want to show you, and I just want to see if you guys can figure out. <clears throat> um, let me just put this down in a second here. Okay. And I hope this milk stout will be good, because otherwise it's a lot of beer to waste. Anyways, I had this idea of putting in this certain, let's say, uh, sweet uh, into in e either a porter or a stout, and I was thinking about this as I was eating it, and 
so, but I still haven't actually paired a porter or a stout with this sweet dessert-like thing. Um, I did that with a porter and honey, and I, I was drinking porter and I tasted some honey and it was good. So if you could somehow manage to get more honey flavor in a honey porter, uh, it would be an awesome combination. Just sadly, honey is a fermentable sugar and then all the yeast will eat it up. Um, anyways, um, so I'll give you a clue. It's a Japanese dessert. It's a Japanese sweet thing that is very popular, even popular in China. And I was thinking the combination of this thing with a porter or a stout would be excellent. I, I still haven't figured out how to do it, but I really think that it would work. So, yeah, let me try. I can't, I'm not going to show you though. I want you guys to guess and put it in the comments below. So, here we go. I already had, let me have some of the porter again. So, I have it in my mouth. That's, this is like, like milk chocolate. You know, this is pretty good. So, here we go. Alright. I'm eating it now. And it's good. Now let me try it with the with the porter here, with the Baltica. Ooh, it enhances the sweetness. Hmm. I don't know if this sweet or dessert um, is necessary to do that, because you could do other things to bring out the sweetness. Um, because what I want to do is really bring out the flavor and the taste of this Japanese dessert into the porter or stout. So anyways, I uh, just wanted to show you guys and uh, also happy 4th of July those of you that are in America. Um, and this is what I'm doing on 4th of July, just sitting in my house drinking beer and uh, bottling up my beer. So anyways, um, oh, it's almost filling up here. Anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching. and. Um, I think, let me just put this on and I'm going to uh, say bye to y'all. So, yeah, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you guys in another beer blog or any other video that I make. See ya.